Hey everybody, Brandon Niles here, host of the the most accurate podcast and senior writer and editor over at 444.com. Uh, you know, fantasy football has become such a huge industry. It can sometimes seem intimidating to get started. Like, how do I find a league? How do I win? What the hell does ADP mean? Um, as such, I want to do like a quick little message to everyone just starting out in their first league. <music> Welcome. Come on in. The water's fine. We're keeping it casual. I got my coffee. We're all good to go. Uh, we love to expand this industry. Welcome everyone to this game. I've had a passion for it since I was a small child. I remember uh, running out and seeking the USA Today on Monday mornings to get the box scores because nothing was online at the time. Uh, it, it was a lot of fun, and I like to share this, and I want to welcome uh, more people and new generations and older generations into this fun thing that I love. Uh, as a reminder, before I get into this, if you like the video, please hit that like button, share, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We really appreciate it. Uh, first off, first thing I want to say, fantasy football is awesome. Uh, you get to draft a roster of your favorite football players. You get points based on how they perform. Uh, basically, you score more points than the other people in your league, you win. It's as simple as that. It doesn't have to be too complicated, you know? Uh, the first step you're going to want to do uh, Got to find a league, which I know, uh, you know, it's always a question mark. Where do I go to find a league? Uh, I'm going to say chances are you already know somebody who's got a league and leagues uh, fill and people drop out and it happens a lot. So uh, ask around some of your uh, football fan friends. Ask if they've got a league. Ask if they've got an opening. They might. It's very possible. And uh, if that's not the case, uh, you can find a random league. You can go on Twitter. People are always looking for a league uh, to fill leagues on Twitter. You can look around there. Uh, you can also go through sites like ESPN, Yahoo, CBS. Uh, they have some pretty interesting league options over at MFL, Fantrax, and Sleeper. Uh, those are a little different style. Sleeper is a great mobile app and a league. Uh, you can join a myriad of different option leagues there at Sleeper uh, straight from your smartphone. Uh, but, you know, ESPN, Yahoo, CBS, those are all, uh, they can be free. You can find paid leagues. Uh, random leagues you can join. Just dip your dip your toes in there. Get them a little wet. Check it out. Uh, it should be fun. You just log in, find a league. Usually there's a button that says find a league. You can be up and running. Uh, note that some are paid, some are free. Just kind of keep an eye on that. Uh, I recommend if you're just getting started, try a free league. Uh, maybe try a couple. Uh, you can do that. Uh, try one that's low cost. Try a free league. Try on the different uh, website, see which ones you like. Uh, it, it's really a low cost entry fee there. Uh, make sure to watch out for Dynasty versus Redraft. Dynasty's fun. You take a big uh, draft at the beginning to get your team, and then each year you keep your players and you just draft the rookies. Uh, I would say the problem with Dynasty leagues is you need committed managers, people that are going to be there year to year and people that aren't going to have uh, problems leaving and that you're not going to have turned over. So I recommend trying redraft first. And if you find it's not quite uh, as advanced and as uh, you know involved as you're looking, then maybe go try Dynasty. Dynasty's fun and honestly even easier to go to Twitter and find uh, rosters that are needing new players to come. So try multiple out. Check it out. First things first, when you're going into a fantasy league, always check the settings. The settings, step two, uh, it's really important. And it's something that even seasoned fantasy football managers forget sometimes. Uh, we get so into the habit of the same old settings, the same old scoring systems. We'll just draft almost on autopilot. So you can gain an edge over even seasoned drafters just by reading the settings. Um, all different leagues have different scoring variations. Uh, they have different lineup configurations. Uh, they have all different types of ways to go about it. So uh, take a good look at the scoring, take a look at the settings, take a look at the lineups and read those settings before you draft your team. Uh, just so you know, a typical scoring structure is going to look, uh, you know, you're going to have one point for every 25 passing yards. You're going to have a point for every 10 rushing or receiving yards. Sometimes you'll see a point per reception or half a point per reception, and uh, you'll get six points per touchdown. That's basically your scoring structure that you're going to go with. Uh, but look for variations of that. Sometimes tight ends get two points per reception. Sometimes quarterbacks get extra points for rushing touchdowns. Sometimes there's bonuses for long touchdowns. Uh, I know that gets a little more into the weeds for an intro video, but just the idea of reading the settings and really getting an idea of what that league is going to be specifically will give you that edge and will help it make it more fun for you when you draft and as you continue your, your league throughout the season. 
So speaking of the draft itself, uh, types vary, but most often you're going to see a serpentine draft. That's a snake draft uh, where it starts with 1 through 12. Normally there's 8 to 12 teams in a league. Uh, it'll start 1 through 12, and then round 2 will be 12 through 1, and round 3 will be 1 through 12 again. That serpentine motion, that's how that draft works. Uh, it's a nice variation. I, I like the serpentine draft because it makes it to where uh, no one draft slot is specifically better than another. Uh, sometimes if you want one of the elite guys that's going top three, then of course you want a high pick. But I like picking toward the end of the end of the uh, first round because I like getting two of the top 14 players. I think that that can sometimes uh, provide an advantage. And it varies year to year. Sometimes players... Uh, you know, you like in the middle of the first round, sometimes players you like in the fourth round. So it doesn't matter. There's all different types of way, but so you're going to see a serpentine draft uh, most common. And then there's some other variations. You can see an auction or a salary cap league. Those are pretty common. And we've got tools over at four for four to help you with those. Uh, basically you'll have a salary cap and you'll bid on players to a certain amount. You can only go up to a certain dollar amount and so forth. Uh, it gets a little bit more, uh, involved, but it can be a lot of fun. I, I really enjoy auction leagues, salary cap leagues. There's even contract leagues where you'll uh, be under a salary cap, but you'll sign multiple years of a player. That can be a lot of fun. When you go into that draft, get you some rankings. Uh, there's custom rankings at four for four. Uh, you can go there. You can plug in your scoring system and get you some custom rankings from there. Uh, it's it's a nice way to go. You can also find cheat sheets pretty much anywhere. I mean, I want to push you to four for four because I think it's a great website with phenomenal tools. But uh, honestly, you can walk outside, run into a lamppost and find some uh, a cheat sheet of fantasy rankings. So, uh, you know, go in there, study those, take a look at them, uh, create some custom ones of your own, create your own rankings based on all the myriad of information that's out there. Uh, just a little tip. I go into the draft, especially a random draft. I, I try to gain an advantage by checking out team names. You know, uh, there's almost always somebody in there that's a hardcore Steelers fan or a hardcore Cowboys fan. And you can tell like the name is like Dem Boys 67 or something. And it's, uh, you can, you, you know, that in that situation, Dak Prescott's going to go around higher and CD lamb's going to go in the first round. And, uh, so, you know, check those team names out. Uh, it'll give you an idea of when some of those hot players for those teams are going to go. And it gives you an opportunity to uh, maybe snipe somebody or maybe wait on somebody because you can expect one of those players to uh, to go a little higher than expected. Uh, by week planning is the other thing to keep in mind with the draft. Uh, running backs and wide receivers, don't worry too much early uh, on the bye weeks, but quarterbacks and tight ends, those one positions that only uh, where you typically only have one of them, uh, make sure you're watching those bye weeks. Make sure you don't end up with two players on the same bye week and you end up in trouble later, uh, especially if it's an early bye week. Over at 4 for 4, we actually have a free article of four bye week planning that I update every year. Uh, I asked several other writers at 4 for 4. You can find that uh, pretty easily on the website. So, uh, you know, just a nice thing to keep in mind. Those bye, Keep those bye weeks in front of you uh, so that you you know what you're getting into, especially in best ball formats. But I'm talking mostly redraft. Uh, lineups. Uh, lots of variations uh, in lineups. I talked about one quarterback and one tight end. Typically, what you're going to see is one quarterback, two running backs, two or three wide receivers, a tight end, a flex, which can be a running back receiver or tight end, and then a kicker and a defense. Uh, I'm seeing a lot more two quarterback. Uh, leagues. I'm also seeing a lot more super flex leagues where that flex spot, uh, you might have an extra flex spot where that flex spot becomes a super flex where you can start not only running back receiver tight end, but also a quarterback. Uh, those are really fun. I, I've actually gotten to the point where my favorite leagues are two quarterback leagues. I, I think that it brings a little bit more importance to the position. And those drafts can get pretty fun. Those quarterbacks start flying off the board. You play quarterback chicken. You don't know if you're going to get one or not. Uh, so you end up sometimes having to pass over some players you really like at other positions because you're stuck at quarterback. Or uh, you get you load up on running backs and receivers, and then you're hoping to hit big on a Desmond Ritter or Marcus Mariota or something. Uh, those are fun. I like those. But, uh, you know. Any variation, whatever the case is, just know going into the draft uh, what's going on. Generally, you're going to have a roster of like 15 players or so. Uh, you only get points for players in your weekly lineup. That's part of the fantasy thing. Each week, you set your lineup. Usually, it's nine or 10 players in your lineup, 15 or so on your roster. Sometimes, you'll have an like an IR slot so you can stash a hurt player. Um, 
tips for lineups, uh, timing and injury reports reports. You know, there's usually a game Thursday. Uh, most often though, most of the games are Sundays. Check your Thursday lineup. Make sure you don't have a game, a, a player playing that night. Uh, if you do have a player playing that night, try to use the player in a running back or wide receiver designated slot, not in your flex spot. Because if you have a last minute injury, that flex spot is more useful to keep open for replacement. So that's the idea. Thursday night, anyone that you're starting, you want to make sure that they're starting in a designated position slot to give yourself more flexibility on Sunday. Uh, watch those injury reports, especially Sunday morning. You get the inactives. Uh, they start coming in about an hour before the first game kicks off. Watch those injury reports. Over at 4 for 4, we keep a, a track of it uh, in real time on Sunday mornings. So go ahead and just pin that 4 for 4 tab. Uh, watch the news that comes through. Uh, you can also go over to our Discord uh, to our Discord community and uh, talk about those. If you're a member at 4 for 4 Discord, you'll talk about all those updated things. It's great. One final thing about lineups, uh, waiver wire. Uh, each each week usually runs waivers. Uh, I've seen leagues that run it in a variety of different ways. Sometimes you have a certain amount of money you bid on. Uh, that's usually called FAAB or free agency auction budget. Uh, you'll see that sometimes you bid money on the available players that that aren't rostered on in, in your league. Uh, sometimes it's just uh, the order of priority, right? So if you're the worst team, usually you'll get the first waiver priority. So every kind of everyone kind of puts them in. Uh, all at the same time, and then waivers run usually Wednesday morning or something of that sort. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Be active on the waiver wire because uh, often that's what makes the difference in a league. I, I remember, and I'm dating myself by going way back here, but like Peyton Hillis had that phenomenal season that landed him on the Madden cover uh, when he was a running back for the Browns. He was used, he was a midseason waiver wire pickup and won a lot of leagues. I think that same year, Michael Vick came back from suspension, showed up in Philly and uh, it blew up at the end of the season. I think he was a waiver wire ad. So be active on the waiver wire, uh, follow all the news. We've got waiver wire pickup suggestions at 444.com as well that come out every week. Uh, be active. It's more fun and you're going to have more success. So finally, I wanted to do just some, some basic strategies and lingo uh, for you. First, first off, the streaming aspect of it. Streaming is a great concept for fantasy, especially for those onesie positions. If you're in a one-quarterback league, then you can stream that position and pick up uh, options each week. We have streaming uh, suggestion articles that come out every week throughout. Uh, sometimes if you don't get one of those elite top five, top six quarterbacks, you can get by picking up Matt Ryan one week and then Trevor Lawrence the next week and then Tua Tagovailoa another week. Uh, it's also very beneficial at tight end if you can't get one of the top ones. And then the best positions to stream are kicker and defense. I don't like drafting real high and taking kickers and defense with a premium draft choice. Instead, I look at week one lineups and I try to pick a good matchup for both. And then I just drop and pick up kickers and defenses throughout the season. I think it's the best way to go about it. And it's a nice little way to give you a little bit of an edge in the draft and uh, keep you competitive all season long. Stacking is another strategy. Uh, this is something I use more in best ball than in redraft. But if I really like an offense, I don't have a problem at all stacking up uh, players in that offense. You want to be cognizant of bye weeks in some league formats. But, you know, if you've got Dak Prescott and C.D. Lamb and they complete a long touchdown, then you uh, essentially get double points that week. And that can give you a real edge on the competition. You can also stack offensive players in general, uh, running backs, receivers, quarterbacks throughout tight ends. If you can stack a really, really successful offense, get you some Patrick Mahomes, grab Ronald Jones late, Travis Kelsey, and then maybe even McCole Hardman. Uh, that offense is going to give you a lot of bang for your buck throughout the season. Uh, so it's not a bad option at all. Again, it's something I do more in best ball formats, uh, which we have lots of information about on the site, uh, but it's, it's still functional in redraft. Uh, you can join four for four. I know that's a, a basic shill thing for me to say, but four for four is awesome. And uh, right now we've got all sorts of different promos. There's always a promo going on. Uh, if you want to try best ball, $10 in a new best ball account at underdog football, uh, you can do that and you'll get a deposit match. You get a free pro subscription. So it's, it's a pretty good deal right now. It gives you an opportunity to try out four for four. Uh, I mentioned the discord community. There's lots of ways you can do. Uh, lots of ways you can benefit and, and help your fantasy team throughout the season by being a member. Uh, finally, ADP. I just want to talk about ADP right now. Uh, average draft position. You'll hear that uttered 
throughout the Twitterverse and throughout every single uh, avenue of fantasy discourse and analysis that you that you talk about. People throw ADP around at all. It's helpful because it helps you identify value, helps you know uh, where players are going, helps you know uh, when you can maybe wait on somebody that you really like. So it is helpful to know. However, it's not the end all be all. And especially if you're in a, a, a league with uh, a bunch of friends or a random league you find, uh, you're going to find people who don't follow ADP. And so if you count on it strictly, then I, I think you can find yourself in trouble because not everybody's going to draft exactly the way the experts say that they're going to be drafted. Um, so go get your guy. Uh, I'm not saying to reach seven rounds on somebody, but you know, if, if you're starting to see in your rankings that that guy's getting pretty close and uh, it's your pick and you really want that player, uh, I have no problem reaching a little bit and throwing a casting ADP to the wind. Uh, finally, have fun. Uh, be engaged in your league. Talk to your league mates. Uh, have a good time. Remember, it's fun. It's 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 something to enhance your your Sunday experiences. You're watching the games. It, it gives you something more to root for. I remember when I was a kid, like the reason I'm a Dolphins fan is because my dad had Dan Marino and Mark Duper on his fantasy team in the late 80s. So I remember being uh, in single digit age, like eight years old, sitting next to my dad on the couch going Marino to Duper, Marino to Duper. It, it's fun. It's a fun thing to do enjoy it and don't take any of it too seriously remember we're all part of this community we're all having a good time uh finally also don't be afraid to ask questions reach out to those of us in the community we love fantasy football we are psyched to talk about it uh, i'm easily accessible on twitter at two guys brandon you could dm me you could shoot me an email at brandon at four for four.com always happy to talk fantasy football i spend a lot of my time just interacting with people who also love this awesome hobby that i've been into for 30 plus years uh, additionally like i said four for four members get access to our discord community great place to chat about your fantasy team if you have questions thanks so much for checking out this video be sure to hit the subscribe button hear us on the most accurate podcast every week talking about the fantasy football information that matters to you and have a good day